Hey everybody, this is Brian here from Co-op Critics, and I am today giving you a look at the Dying Light Companion app. Now, Dying Light, of course, is the new game that's out from the makers of Dead Island. It is on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. I am currently playing it on Xbox One, and you may have seen some of our Co-op Plays videos on the Co-op Critics YouTube page of us playing some of the Co-op missions and some of the single player. Well, the Companion app is pretty interesting because if you've played Dying Light at all, or the Dead Island games, then you know that a lot of time is spent in-game collecting materials. Upgrade materials for your weapons, finding new weapons, uh, things to make med kits out of, things to make upgrades out of. Well the cool thing about the Dying Light app is basically it is an app that allows you to collect materials and upgrade things like that for your in-game character of Dying Light and send them to your in-game character. And so the, uh, the app itself is pretty simple. It reminds me quite a bit of the war table in Dragon Age Inquisition or the fleet management mechanic in um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It's basically you sending minions out into the field for missions that take a certain amount of time and they gather materials during those missions. And so what happens when you open up the app is you have a small crew of runners that can go out into the city and they can complete certain missions and during those missions they will find materials that they'll then bring back to you some of which they need but others that can be sent into your uh, game to your in-game character in Dying Light and so as you can see from just looking at some of the uh, missions that are out there there's simple things like going out and scavenging saving hostages um, unlocking a safe zone a lot of things that you might be doing in the Dying Light game itself and you start off with this small crew but you can have a crew as large as 20 and uh, on any given mission you can send up to three scouts to go out and complete a mission and so the way that you sort of divvy them up is as they go out they become more powerful and every mission requires a certain amount of squad power that you have to have to send people out on that mission and that is really dictated by what their stats are and so higher level scouts will be able to take up more of that power requirement while lower level ones will obviously um, not be able to go out on the more challenging missions and you'll actually get an indicator as you're setting up the missions of how dangerous it is and what is the likelihood of you having casualties of that group that you're sending out and so you're sort of managing those resources and you're trying to find the best combination of scouts and missions so that you can have as many of your crew out on as many different missions as possible at any given time now those missions could take anywhere from a couple of minutes until a couple of hours and when they come back from those missions you'll get a notification and you can go in and find out what the loot was that they gained on that mission and you'll also find out whether or not any of your scouts uh, died on the mission and so as you become more successful and you complete more missions you'll have more and more scouts that want to join your team until you get up to 20 and once you get up to 20 you'll have to get rid of someone in order to add somebody to your group so with 20 scouts you can have a lot of different missions going at any given time as they get more challenging however you need more powerful scouts to go out on them so you're kind of grinding on the lower level missions with your scouts but every time they go out they're basically bringing something back and you'll have everything from um, alcohol and gauze and things to make med kits to full med kits themselves to different upgrade materials metal parts plastic parts for the things that you might use in dying light to upgrade your weapons and so as you go out and gather those things you'll then have them in your inventory and you also have sort of a second inventory that shows you what the scouts have gathered for themselves because they need certain items to go out on certain missions uh, one mission might require a trap kit another mission might require a flashlight and so in order to qualify for certain missions you have to have the right materials and you have to have enough people of a certain level in order to complete the prerequisites for that mission and so I haven't even unlocked all of the missions yet in the game however I've put at least a few hours into it already and I've gotten a ton of stuff to send to my in-game character. And managing the missions is actually pretty fun because you constantly have people returning from missions, people going out on missions, and so it's one of those apps that you can actually fall down the rabbit hole of and really start spending a lot of time with, but um, so far I have found that the time I've put into it has more than been rewarded for the benefits that it gives to my character in-game because just playing the first few hours of Dying Light, med kits were kind of scarce early on. Well, I was finding tons of med kits on these missions that I was going out in through the app, so I was able to send myself tons of med kits, and that really kind of helped me not have to worry about that early on in the game, and it, and it really sort of changed things. Now, there are indicators in the inventory of the app here 
that you can find weapons and more valuable things. I haven't found any of that stuff yet, and I can only assume that those things are found on the highest level missions within the app, but I haven't seen any of that stuff yet. So right now I'm just getting upgrade materials, I'm getting med kits and things like that, and I'm really managing my squad and trying to level them up. And every time they come back successfully from a mission, they're leveling up bit by bit. And so, you know, I have everybody from level 1 to level 10, and that really gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of the type of missions that I can send them out on. And I'm not even halfway done with this app yet. And again, this is a free app that you can download. When you get it, you uh, basically hook it up to your account either on Xbox or PC or PS4, and then um, you'll be able to send things to yourself in-game. And when you do that, and you'll see in a minute, as I get into the inventory here in the game, right now I'm sort of collecting loot from uh, the mission that my characters went out on and sort of seeing what they brought back, but you can create a package. So it's like a care package that you can send in-game, and you'll see here I'm scrolling through the different materials that I actually picked up on these different scouting missions, and so you can choose what things from that inventory that you want to send and as you can see there's like 20 slots and so each item that I want to send takes up a slot I can fill up the crate with whatever I want to fill it up with from the inventory that I have and then I send that along and when you do that that package actually ends up at the quartermaster in dying light now you know the quartermaster is the guy you go see who gives you free items every day well you'll have additional free items from your scouts the next time you send yourself a package the one thing to remember is you gotta pick up a package from the quartermaster before you can send yourself another one in the game so you want to manage that and not lose that on any of those items but the dying light app free on ios free on android absolutely worth picking up and will definitely benefit you in game so uh... that's it for now check uh, coopcritics.com for more on dying light in the coming weeks.